Hi, my name is Dave Farley. I've just finished my talk at um, Yale London on the topic of software engineering. Um, and our, it's my belief that we should be adopting a more engineering approach to the development of software. And by that, what I mean is applying practical, pragmatic, science-inspired ideas to the delivery of software. And I've got 10 ideas that I think are important, foundational for our discipline, which divide into two groups. The two groups are that software is complicated stuff. And we don't know, we never know at the start of a software development what the right answer is. And so in order to be able to do a good job of software, we need to learn and we need to become experts at learning. Those are the foundations of our discipline. Our job isn't just writing code, our job is solving problems for people with software. And so in order to do that, we've got to learn what those problems are. And then we've got to learn and come up with ideas that, we, that might work to solve them, but they might not. So we need, to, we need to try things out and see what works and see what doesn't. Um, we need to learn whether our software is fast enough, whether it's resilient enough, whether it's scalable enough. And we, all of these things are things that we need to learn little bit by little bit over a period of time. That is the nature, the, the profoundly, I would say, the nature of software development. To become experts at learning, there's, there's a big brother that we can look to <laughs> and, 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 and take inspiration from, and that's science. Science is all about learning, acquiring new knowledge. So I'm not saying that we need to be approaching software development with six sigma levels of accuracy in our, in our research or whatever, but we should be applying some of the basic ideas of science. And one of the core ideas is start off assuming that we're probably wrong, starting off that our assumptions are probably wrong. Then we start doing five things that I think are foundational for learning. We iterate, we divide our work up into smaller pieces, smaller steps, and we learn from that. And the way that we learn from that is by gathering feedback. We take feedback from our, our ideas and, and, and listen to the results and observe the results. And that allows us to better navigate our development, whatever that might be, towards success. We need to approach things, the development of our software, as a process of incremental building of our systems. Instead of imagining the creation of software as some genius having some idea and the, the solution springing fully formed in their minds, modern software development is nothing like that, except on trivially small, simple scales. For real systems, for real big systems, modern software is, is much more like a process of accretion of learning. And so we're going to learn new things. We're going to layer those new ideas on top of ideas that we've had and tried out and tested before. And so we're going to build our systems incrementally. Essentially, this is a process of kind of guided evolution where we're going to steer our learning in the direction of some outcome that we, that we desire, whatever that might be for our software, and guide it in that direction. Uh, to do that, we need to start thinking about working experimentally, trying organizing our thinking into ways so that each little change that we make, each little idea that we come up with, we think of and treat as an experiment. As soon as we start thinking in those sorts of ways, that means that we're going to take things like controlling the variables seriously. We want to control the variables so that we can, so that our software can be more deterministic, so that it can give us good answers when we ask questions of it. The idea of being experimental is kind of scary for some people uh, because it implies that we might be wrong. Well, tough, we might be wrong. The, the reality is that um, we can never be certain of success. What engineering does uh, in other disciplines and should do for us is it doesn't predefine solutions. What engineering does is it narrows the scope of, of acceptable solutions. It rules out the dumb ideas. 
And that's a fantastically useful tool. So we can optimize to narrow our focus, rule out the dumb ideas, and give us a greater chance, therefore, of success. That one of the ideas that we do pick, whatever that might be, through our experimental iteration and discovery, is a good one. And last in my list of optimizing for learning ideas is the idea of being empirical. One of the things that distinguishes engineering from pure science is it's got to work in the real world. So we've got to try things out. We've got to monitor, gather information from production systems, learn from the reality of our system, the reality of the use of our system, and so on. The second class of ideas that I think are foundational for software development are managing complexity. Modern software systems are hugely complicated. And for that, there's another five ideas that we have for managing complexity. Um, we need to build more modular systems. We need to divide up, compartmentalize the systems so that we can make change in one place without being concerned about that change impacting in other areas of the code. For that, we need more modular systems, but we also need more cohesive systems. We need systems that, uh, where the things that are unrelated are far apart in the code base modular and the things that are closely related are close together in the code base cohesive one of the tools that we can use to enhance the modularity and cohesion in our code is the idea of separation of concerns each piece of code each class each module each function is focused on one task and then it's easier to read it's easier to write it's easier to test it's easier to understand it's easier to change when it's like that and that drives the modularity and cohesion. But our software, in whatever scale, needs to interact with other parts of the software. And so we need ability to talk to another part in well-defined ways, but without worrying too much about how that other part works if we want to be able to change things sensibly, quickly, and efficiently. That means we need abstraction. We need abstraction between the modules of our system so that I can talk to a part of the system over there and clearly understand the conversation that's going on, but not have no idea at all about how that part works. And last in my list of five things is the idea of coupling. We work to be able to reduce the, prefer more loosely coupled. It's contextual. It's managing the coupling appropriately with a preference for looser coupling. And, and what that means is that I'm not too, too worried about the detail of those parts of the code in other places. All of these things together are important for a one single reason. And that one reason is really our ability to change the code. I would argue that the defining characteristic of high quality code is our ability to change it. Of course, there are other important things, um, other important ideas that are vital to, to good code. But if you can't change your code, you're not going to be able to make it faster. You're not going to make it a better product fit for your customers. You're not going to be able to make it more resilient. You're not going to be able to make it a nicer place to work. All of those other properties come from our ability to change the code. So the idea that I would like to leave you with is that the defining characteristic of quality in code is our ability to change it. Thank you very much.